Hi everybody and welcome to Talk Gnosis, uh, another special episode um, to fill in a little bit of a gap we had in our recording schedule, so we thought we'd uh, give you a little quick one here, uh, and to help you do that is Reverend Mr. Jonathan Stewart. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Father Tony. And we have with us Tina Gong from labyrinthos.co. She is a uh, designer and a tarot enthusiast, and uh, we're going we're gonna to talk to her about the tarot. So welcome, Tina. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. All right. So um, you have designed uh, two tarot decks, and you've, uh, you've written an app. So uh, that's, uh, that sounds like a lot of work. How was that process? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, was, it was really fun. I mean, like I... I sort of uh, worked on the Golden Thread Tarot first, and it was my way of sort of getting comfortable with the tarot. Um, I think prior to um, working on the app and the illustrations, I, I sort of only knew about tarot from a very, like, um, I guess surface perspective so um the way i learn things is really just by like just making stuff um so it helped me you know get familiar with the cards while also like putting into my own like uh symbolism and everything and thinking about what every card meant to me which was i think really helpful and just helping me also be a better reader and hopefully better person maybe <laughs> <laughs> Can you, uh, so not only did you sign two decks, which is amazing, and that's like 156 cards, it's a massive undertaking, and uh, both decks are amazing, I was praising them before we started, and as I said, I have to keep some of that praise, <laughs> but uh, both of them are now my, maybe my favorite tarot decks, and I really like tarot, and I've looked at a lot of decks, and hey, let's send out a little shade, there's a lot of ugly, terrible, <laughs> kind of useless tarot decks out there, and uh, both of your decks are, are, are both beautiful and practical um so there's a little praise um thank you uh, I guess, yeah <laughs> i'm <laughs> really bad at reacting is... to this stuff so oh, sorry. <laughs> it, it makes me like freeze up and, but, like, <laughs> but thank you thank you <laughs> yeah no no you're welcome and i, and I, I can't be uh, abusive enough because uh, i really i really do love them both but i i guess some of our uh, our watchers and listeners they'll, they'll know what a tarot deck is but they probably won't be familiar with the app that you also made, labyrinthos.co. So if you could explain a little bit about, about what that is and maybe why people should check it out and what how, how you use it to interact with the text. Sure. I mean, um, so there's two apps. Um, the original one I built was um, Golden Thread Tarot, um, and it was a companion app for the deck that I illustrated. Um, so, like, I built that originally because I've... When, when I... After I finished illustrating the deck, um, I knew I wanted to print it, um, but I know that traditionally what comes with a deck is like a little guidebook. And I just felt like, you know, I'm in a lucky position where I knew how to code and like build stuff. So there, I just felt like there was so much more that you could do with technology than just with printing. And I really wanted to build something that was, that helped use my background from doing all the stuff that I didn't like building <laughs> for other companies um, and use it to build something that I really enjoy and I'm passionate about. So um, Golden Thread uh, was uh, created that way and it came with, it started off doing with like the standard database of meanings and stuff, but um, it eventually grew because I felt like, you know, again, like you could do so much more and it sort of became this almost like mood tracking tool um, where you could sort of meditate on your uh, daily draws and see your reactions to them and it also tracked um, what your readings were about and what you were concerned about the most so eventually it became um, I dubbed it as like a mirror which I really do think that's what tarot is so like it was creating a reflection of yourself so you could understand and contemplate and maybe know yourself a little bit better. And then Labyrinthos uh, was sort of like a, I think I wanted to also just build something for um, tarot newbies, basically. <laughs> so um, it was just, I, I had this like 
I was inspired by all the I, the idea of like a school of witchcraft and you know the Harry Potter stuff since since they were uh, really interesting when I was a kid um, and I really wanted it to feel as if labyrinthos actually existed somewhere inside your app maybe and there were these like little characters they dance around in the app and just chat and you can poke them um, and you level up your character you go through courses and hopefully you learn some tarot along the way um, I mean. yeah. Uh, just backtracking um, uh, a little bit to, to what to what you said. So actually, you you know we have we have a pretty big audience of people who know a lot of things, and as well as you know curious spiritual seekers, people who stumble upon the show. But I think there's kind of a a public perception that the tarot is is something for telling the future. But you said it's it's for knowing oneself better. Could you elaborate a little bit on that and and how you kind of made this a central focus of of the app and the decks? Sure. I mean. I think of tarot as sort of like a universal language, right? Um, and I'm sure you guys, you, you already know this, but like it's it's basically, to me, it's like all the cards represent to like, you can look at the cards as like, um, every card is an event in your life or a person you meet or a state of being. And um, they sort of are like very universal to a human experience, I think. So um, once you put the cards together in readings and spreads, you sort of create this whole narrative. You create these uh, stories. Um, and that's what I really think the tarot is about. It's it's really about telling you a story about your own life. Um, and when you create that story, what you do is essentially, like, I think there's, like, I, I think a lot of writers actually like think this and I, I'm sure you like you know already but like um, oh, you create things to create yourself and not to and I think there's a perception that it's like when you create something it's to express yourself but I think it's sort of the other way around right like um, when you write a journal you're also writing you're also creating your identity you're by creating that narrative right so I think divination, like, I think it's a very complex thing. And the problem is that most people will not, like, um, think about the psychology behind it, which I really feel like when you, again, it's that, like, when you create, you are, create these stories, you're creating your future, right? Like, that's, if you, if you have, like, if your narrative internally is always about going to be about like um my my life is really bad um everything is so tough then that sort of materializes around you that's how you interpret the world which is essentially like a bunch of you know random events right and but if you tell it as a story of say like overcoming or like getting stronger um i think you will naturally become that right um, so I feel like that's sort of what divination is at the end, right? But when you just say that it's divination without understanding that psychological aspect, I think it puts the power of your life in something else besides yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and so I think that's where it gets harmful for someone, you know, um, I think it's really helpful for people to take responsibility because it also helps them, it also gives so much hope, right? Yeah. Um, so sort of that's sort of what I've been, at least that's how I think about tarot. And I mm -hmm. think that's why it's such a powerful tool because it allows you to create these stories and eventually hopefully drive your life in the direction that you want it to go. <laughs> Amazing. Sorry to interrupt, but we need your help. Talk Gnosis and all of the shows on the Gnostic Wisdom Network are free and will always be free, but it does cost us a lot of time and money to actually make these shows. So what I'd like to ask is that if you have enjoyed our programming, if you've found something useful uh, about it, if you've been educated, 
please consider becoming a patron over on our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash Gnostic. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash Gnostic. We've got a whole bunch of new shows that we'd like to start making, but we can't do it until we can start to support ourselves a little bit more financially. And um, we really hope that you will assist us in our goals. Uh, we've got a great show coming up about sex and spirituality with uh, Reverend Mr. Jonathan Stewart from Talk Gnosis and his wife, Sarah Beal. Uh, we've got The Lost Word coming back, esoteric Freemasonry and fraternal orders and initiate, initiatory orders and all that kind of thing. We've got Temples and Tentacles uh, with some weird fiction authors, kind of Lovecraftian spirituality stuff that I think you're really going to like. Plus some really interesting kind of fictional and... Um, uh, kind of entertainment based things that we want to do that also have kind of an esoteric and Gnostic educational component. So please, uh, we need your help to make all of this possible. We have big dreams, but we don't have a lot of resources to make those dreams a reality. So please do visit patreon.com slash Gnostic if you haven't already and uh, pledge. You just give a small amount of money uh, for every educational media thing that we put out. And then at the end of the month, your, your card gets charged. You can set an upper limit so that you're, ne you're never surprised by uh, too many things getting charged on your card per month. It's really very easy and very painless, and it makes a huge difference to the Gnostic Educational Ministry of the Gnostic Wisdom Network, the Apostolic Joe and I Church, and all of us here who work so hard to bring you this um, what we think, anyway, is pretty great content. So if you agree, that's patreon.com slash Gnostic. Sorry again for the interruption, and back to the show. You say <laughs> that uh, you um, didn't have a lot of experience with the tarot before you, uh, you, you designed your first deck. What made you want to do that? What, what, was your, um, what, what was your fascination with tarot? Where did that come from? Sure. I mean, like, I studied it when I was a kid like we, maybe when I was like 12 or 13 but I didn't again like I didn't really understand it, it I was I just thought it was like this cool thing <laughs> um, but I think in the past few years um, like I so this is going to be like sort of intense but like my my I grew up with a borderline parent and what happens when you grow up with a borderline parent is that like you almost are not allowed to have your own identity so for so long in my life i basically felt like i was like very empty that i didn't have a self and so i've slowly recognized that through like the help of like loved ones and friends and um and i would say even tarot too just because it helped me again create that narrative where i didn't necessarily have the tools to do that myself um so i that's how i started getting into it i mean again it was like first very philosophical but i like the idea that like okay i didn't feel like i had like a strong sense of self but the philosophy again behind the tarot was more like oh these are all archetypes and reflections of yourself anyway so it gave me comfort knowing that like all, there were all these disparate parts of me and I wasn't expected to be like a static person, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I think that's an expectation from like a lot of mainstream media or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the... Uh, uh... For for the two decks, uh, I'm just wondering about some of the uh, okay. Well, one, what, what's 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 the differences between the the two decks that you made, and kind of two, you know, the tarot is sort of packed with symbolism. It is, you know, that's really the whole point in some ways is archetypes and symbolism. Yeah. So, so when you were designing your decks, did you did you do a lot of research? Did you look up what this symbol meant? Did you look at a lot of other decks, or or did you just kind of incorporate these within yourself and then kind of bring out some internal symbolism? So I don't know. There's about ten questions in there. <laughs> But if you could answer a few. Um, so uh, I guess I, in terms of like um, the differences between the decks, um, they were the overall very abstract concepts were really different um, in the sense that like Golden Thread was definitely a bent, again, like in 
I guess I was also trying to reflect that in the app of like going inward, right? Um, and it was all about like um, the, I guess the archetypes and the symbolism overall through the deck was like you're in like the night or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> the, it's I guess supposed to be a metaphor for like the world and like sometimes you just don't know what you're walking through or whatever and the, the golden thread was like this the I guess I was pulling from the symbolism of, of like Ariadne's thread um, where you are following it out of this big maze and also there's I think there's a Chinese myth somewhere. <laughs> Don't quote me on this. Even though I'm Chinese, I should know this. But I remember it vaguely, and only very vaguely, about like a string that connects all conscious beings. So it was, again, like using this idea of a thread and the style of the artwork um, to um, express that. Um, and the luminous spirit is more about like looking outward and the concept there is looking at a prism and taking light and um, shining it through a prism and having all these colors and varieties and different things. They are all part of the one, um, but in many different layers. So I think I, those two are both two different metaphors, at least for me, for tarot, the way I was looking at it. Like one is, you know, helping me create the story that will lead me through this very convoluted life. And another one where it reveals all the different varieties of the self and others and, and everything. Um, for the symbolism, I... I mean, when I was researching the first deck, um, I was definitely just like, I mean, I had my really, really old decks from when I was like, you know, 12 and 13. And I also had um, a few of like the artist decks. Like I think Lo, Lo Scarabeo makes uh, a couple of them. Like I had the Klimt deck. Uh, I had the Muha deck, um, and I, I was looking through there for inspiration, um, and also uh, in terms of like what the cards meant, um, because again, like I didn't have that strong of a background, um, and I was also reading a lot of um, like uh, Hodorowski at the time, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> it, it always starts with Hodorowski. Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, th that's one of the reasons I, I really like uh, Golden Thread, and, and again, I like them both. Just as I said, it's only been a few days since I found out about the decks, and I'm in love with both of them. But you know, H Hordorowski, he he talks about like it, with the Golden Thread, it's 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 very beautifully li laid out. There's a lot of like straight lines, clean mm -hmm. line work, but there's still there's you know there's still all the weighty symbolism is in there, but it's not mm -hmm. it's not weighed down. And Hordorowski talks about a problem with like the the um the, the rider weight or the smith rider mm. weight deck is there's actually too much symbolism packed into every card mm -hmm. so mm, he talks true. about how you need to leave a little bit of room for your own subconscious to get in there yeah uh, but at the same time you can't leave too much room you're just looking at playing cards so that's why i really like i really like your decks because i really think you strike that balance where where you have these really evocative beautiful uh images that are that have just enough detail and can sometimes have all the weighty symbolism but they're not they're not weighed down and and also something else i really like that um and, and kind of going back to smith um uh, pamela coleman smith uh you, um uh was one of the important tarot designers she has a real mm -hmm. playful sense of humor and you know i see a little bit of that uh, particularly in golden fred right like your devil card uh you know there's uh, <laughs> it's, it's all the weighty symbolism is there but i really like how you drew the two the two spirits they're almost like the ghosts and pac-man or something yeah. and there's like there's there's a playfulness that 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 is very evocative in that deck um and then and, and I guess, is this sort of delivered, too, for, like, the inward, outward? You know, the Golden Fred has all these straight lines mm -hmm. where um, um, uh, the other deck has, it's very sensual and has all these soft lines. You know, all these curves, and it's very, mm -hmm. and, yeah. Was that, like, a deliberate artistic choice, or is it something that came up? 
I think or subconsciously. Well, I mean, I'm not sure whether I put any intention in that respect. I mean, I definitely want knew I wanted Golden Thread to be very clean in that sense, and um, so which is why everything is iconographic. Um, but um, the luminous spirit, I was really just craving doing like my the original style of art that I usually do um and i didn't do that originally because it took so much time it took way more time than illustrating i think um the golden thread so it was just an undertaking that i wasn't ready to do yet but um i i now that you mention it <laughs> um i do think there is an interesting side effect that came out which was like the internal world is filled with archetypes and the external world is filled with manifestations which come in very like full details and um you know changes i guess <laughs> so that's interesting didn't plan for it yeah. but perfect um i uh, uh i have a question specifically specifically me i do a um I do a tarot workshop uh, the, every semester at a local college, and it's kind of focused on not using tarot to tell the future, but to, mm -hmm. um, to know oneself better. Um, and uh, you know, my preferred deck is 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 the Smith the Smith Rider Waite uh, because it's just it's preferred yeah. to, to, in many ways uh, because I like the symbolism, but also it's just because it's the one I was using when I was twelve. So <laughs> uh, you know that that becomes imprinted upon one. So. Um, but uh, so you know, I get up and I do my speech about archetypes and how mm. this is this is a pictorial system that represents all of humanity and every experience yep. you can go through. And all these figures are inside of you, and uh, you, the, the Smith uh, the Rider Waite deck portrays exclusively very beautiful looking white thin people. And when yeah. I look around the room, that's rarely what you know. It's a large college with uh, with a diverse. Like you know, it's a college in the real world, so it's mm -hmm. it, that's not what the room looks like. So I, I'm wondering if you were thinking about that when you were making your tarot decks. So many past tarot decks just have these 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 conventionally beautiful white people. Uh, like w w was that was that something you were thinking about when you were making your deck at all? That kind of representation of actually representing all humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I think it's a huge problem, and I feel like there's definitely, like, chatter about it in, like, um, in, like, the Instagram tarot communities that I've, um, seen around, and I do think that, you know, it is tricky, because it is, again, like you said, supposed to represent all of humanity. Um, I think I sort of, with Golden Thread, I wasn't thinking about it much, because, again, it was iconographic, like, I don't think you can tell what uh, race these people in the little um, cards and stuff are um, but I was definitely thinking about that in the luminous thread um, but it wasn't like on the top of my mind but I know there's there are a lot of like um, indie decks out there that are specifically trying to address this problem I know one for example is um, Onyx to Dust um, I think I think that's the correct one, uh, uh, where um, the artist is like uh, a woman of color, and her entire deck is uh, depictions of women of color, um, and it's like beautiful. And she was inspired by um, traditional um, artwork, and um, so I think there is now, like more than ever, I feel like a push from people of color that are artists to depict more of their cultures and bring that forward. Um, I know also there are a couple of decks that are beloved um, that I haven't had the chance to actually um, get for myself um, that are like uh, LGBT friendly. Um, I think the Silicon Dawn, the Terror of the Silicon Dawn is Another one that is really beloved, but I feel like that's that's a really rare collector's one that I I I've, have never been able to see in pers uh, person. Um, I know they depict uh, a lot of different differently shaped bodies, and also like they depict um, trans um, people. They depict um, like even like otherworldly people. Like why why stop at like humans, right? Um, 
so I definitely think there's a there are decks that specifically address that issue and I do think there are decks like mine that just did it because I feel like you know that's that's like the people that we were like us we see in real life right like it's I I didn't think too hard about it um but I knew I wanted it that way um I and I know like others I I feel like have that balanced um look I think like the fountain tarot is like that too um where they they show a lot of um people of color as well um yeah I I definitely think it's a growing trend <laughs> And there's also decks that, like, sh don't even show people at all and s work with, like, animal symbolism and stuff like that. So, um, I mean, I think it's great. <laughs> so that people are just bringing more of that into their artwork. And, and I think it's especially important in the post-Trump world to be more, <laughs> you know, loud about it than ever. So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that's helpful or if that answers anything. <laughs> that, 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 that is a beautiful answer. Um, Father, did you, did you have anything? Well, I like the question you put in here, actually. Um, you know, obviously the, the, uh, the tarot in general and, and yours uh, in particular and your app in particular um, would be of use to people who are uh, already, already spiritual seekers or, you know, in a, in a religious community that uses the tarot, like a pagan or a Wiccan community. But um, do you think that as an introspection tool, somebody who has no interest in the tarot as a religious, uh, a religious device could get some use out of it as well? Um, yeah, totally. I mean, that's sort of, I mean, I came into the tarot definitely like um, at least my second wave into the tarot with a little bit of skepticism right like and I think that's sort of healthy because I think it come with the skepticism comes a little bit of like oh but why <laughs> and you know that curiosity to go um, one step further and not just accept that this is for example a divination tool but like how does divination work how does like um you know, I, I think all of that is really helpful in becoming, being a good reader for someone. And, um, and because of that, I'm, it, it definitely helped me again through like really tough times. <laughs> um, so I definitely feel like it has the ability to hopefully with practice also help people take more control of their own lives in many ways um so i think i think there's hopefully that and also to make sense of things <laughs> as they happen to you um mm -hmm. so i definitely i i don't think it's um for just for um uh, spiritually inclined types. I, I, I've actually seen it re weirdly enough um, in entrepreneurial circles, hmm. um, especially amongst like female entrepreneurial circles, as a way to like. Um, there was another book that was written, I think, recently that was called like um, by Jessa Crispin or something, um, but it was all about using the tarot for, um, you know creative inspiration mm. like if you're an artist being able to like uh use i i i haven't read the book yet so so um you should not like take you should probably take this with a grain of salt but uh, it seems like um i originally got excited about it because it seemed to be a broader use of the tarot um it seemed to also make use of like the games that I used to play with the tarot on my own, which was really just like t drawing a card and telling stories with mm. it, like one after the other, um, like uh, <laughs> which, which again, like is I think in line with the spirit of what the cards are about. Um, so, yeah, I've I've definitely seen it in very 
new context that mm-hmm. I would not have expected to see it before. Yeah. Jonathan and I started a project, uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago. You've probably forgotten about it because I did until just now. Um, we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were talking, we're always talking about doing some kind of scripted fictional show on the network mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, with kind of Gnostic key themes. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and I, I started writing, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a basic outline and I did it by drawing tarot cards. And I drew, oh. I drew cards for each of the characters and then for each of kind of like the plot points, I drew a card and um, tried to make a story out of that. That didn't actually end up going anywhere because, you know, busy, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Support the Patreon, everybody. I did forget about that. So yeah, everybody can sign up to our Patreon. You'll get to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah, for sure. And, and I think it can be an important uh, tool for artists and it could be, uh, I've used it for, for some creative writing as well. Mm. And, and again, something I, I really love about, about your app is, is the emotion tracking, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think, um, you, you know, you can actually track how you're feeling day to day and how you're reacting to the cards. And no matter what beliefs you have or don't have that just seems obviously of value <laughs> um <laughs> and it's uh it's it's a pretty awesome tool so uh so father how are we how are we doing for time and questions Did we yeah I, th- I think that's uh i think that's gonna do it i mean obviously we can go on and on as as always but uh you know gotta gotta leave some stuff for uh for later <laughs> so um Definitely, if you uh, if you're listening to this and you are interested in the tarot at all, go to labyrinthos.co um, and uh, and take a look. It's a it's a beautiful website, by the way, and um, you can uh, take some classes. You can buy some decks, and uh, at the very least, sign up for the mailing list and learn some things about the tarot. So, thank you once again, Tina Gong, for joining us and uh, for your wonderful tarot decks. And, and we look forward to seeing much more from you in the future. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. (laughs) You're the best. (laughs) See you later, everybody. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.